Hey everybody, it's Nikki with Revive Jewelry, and I'm super pumped today. Uh, we have a very special guest joining me. I'm gonna talk for a little bit. Hi, she's here. Okay, so I'm gonna get her in here, and then I will introduce her for you guys. So let me just get Miss Addie in here. She's coming on. Hopefully. Hey! Hi, Nikki! How are you? Good! Thank you so much for inviting me to do this. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming. I think that everybody who sees this is going to be super excited with all the information that you're going to have for them. Um, let me tell them a little bit about who you are and then I'll turn it over to you and you can kind of Great. introduce yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, so obviously Addie and I know each other, but uh, we met because Addie is the senior community relationship manager at the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. So uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, I call it PanCan because it's a mouthful, but uh, <laughs> Addie works there and she is the senior community relationship manager. So I'm going to turn it over to her and she can introduce herself and go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. I'm just so excited to be here with this wonderful community. Um, and you know, the way that we met was really sweet. I was at an event, um, our 20th year anniversary event at PanCan, and I met Nikki. And we started talking about her jewelry line and what she does to give back to causes. Um, and then we, I kind of asked her where her store was, and it was really similar to where um, I was going to be living. And then we found out that we were going to be living on the same street, and we were neighbors. So that was just an instant connection. And I just have to say, um, I think it's just so important, Nikki, that you really care about the causes that you're supporting. It's not just, you know, it's continuously updating yourself and, and going to those events and actually really being a part of all of this. So um, thank you for having oh. me. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, it was a super weird coincidence when we kind of met and we were like, oh my God, we're going to be neighbors. It's so. very cool. <laughs> the nice little like uh, serendipitous thing that happened. Yeah. So it was very nice. And then we stayed in touch, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so when all of this sort of COVID stuff happened, I was like, oh my God, this is a big deal. And, you know, my community, are, a lot of them are at risk. A lot of them are caregivers for people who are at risk. Um, or a lot of them are just concerned about, you know, how they can get involved. So I wanted to kind of have you on today and ask you some questions and maybe help them like put their mind at ease, like give them some tips. So yeah. can we just jump right in? Absolutely. Okay. So um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what PanCan is and what your guys' mission is over there? So PanCan, I know it's um, a long name, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Um, we're dedicated to really fighting the world's toughest cancer, pancreatic cancer, which is now the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths. So um, it's a really tough cancer to fight, and I've been working at the organization for about five years, and I've seen just a lot of incredible work happen. Um, we fight the disease on four fronts, on all fronts. So um, we fight with um, our advocacy work. We also fight um, with our patient services, and then we fight with our science and research department, and also community outreach and our fundraising and education programs. That's so awesome. I love that. I love that. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you've accomplished? Like, I know because I follow all this stuff, and it's, yeah. I always get so excited, <laughs> but can you what everyone has gone through to get to this point? And I think, you know, coming back from the, the holiday break, it was really exciting to see in 2020, we really... Um, had you know, a lot of things to celebrate. So um, I think one of them being the, the survival rate finally got to the double digits. So we are at a 10% five-year survival rate. Yeah, it's, it's big. And when I started five years ago, the survival rate, five-year survival rate was at 6%. So just in five years, to see that type of growth? I get chills just thinking yeah. about it. It's amazing. Um, it's, it's pretty fast in, in the world of cancer and um, all of our, our volunteers and all of our change makers, like all of you, I mean, that's that's why this has happened. Um, so that was a huge one for us. Um, and then our Know Your Tumor program um, is a somewhat new program. It's been around for a couple of years, um, but it's really like a molecular profiling program. And so um, patients that call in and talk about the Know Your Tumor program, they would just need to get a, a sample of a biopsy of their tumor and then we would um, profile it through through an outside company. Um, and then there's a report that comes back to the doctors and to the patients and to PanCan and everyone works together to find out if there are 
um, certain mutations that were in that mm. tumor that maybe could be treated in a different way. Maybe there's a different drug for breast cancer or something that has been reacting to those type of mutations. And so instead of treating pancreatic cancer all as um, one disease, it's really looking deep into exactly the, the makeup of that tumor to make sure that you're getting the best treatment. Um, and I, the exciting part about that is at the beginning of the year, um, there was an article published. And when you publish a paper um, in the science world and in the cancer world, it's, it's a really big deal. It's really meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, and so our paper was about the a little over a thousand patients that um, were in this program. And 26 of the percent of those patients did have some type of actionable mutation. Um, which was a lot and really important to see that um, that's, a, that's a high percentage. It's not like less than 1%, 26%, yeah. you know, really they did find something that they could work on. Um, and then it's about matching the right, um, you know, treatment for that. So maybe it's a little bit less. But for those that did have the treatment that was matched, um, they did have a one year um, additional lifespan added on just because of being coming a part of that program and, and matching up with a different type of um, treatment that they would have never known about before. Mm -hmm. um, so that one, I've been so passionate about that program for a while. So that one was huge and really stuck with me. Yeah. Um, and there's That's so many cool. more. There's, I'll go briefly over, um, we, came, we all came back, you know, we have these, these amazing volunteers that march on Capitol Hill in the summer and we have our, we just paint the Washington DC purple. Our advocacy program is really unlike any other um, and we were able to, for the first time ever, secure an actual dedicated pancreatic cancer research program, some of the NCI funding, going just to pancreatic cancer. It's always usually a part of something else, maybe part of the deadliest cancers package. But um, for that to happen, it was $6 million. And we're, of course, already shooting for more. Um, but that was a huge accomplishment that we haven't had since we started 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, huge that's so, amazing yeah it was really and it's just, again it's it's from it's the volunteers it's our staff it's just everyone with those big purple hearts really making it happen and reaching out to their um, local members um, to advocate for that um, and then the last one is you know kind of pretty new for us so precision promise um, is a program that is our first clinical trial so a lot of clinical trials are funded by a lot of drug companies and different companies, but we're actually funding our own. It's it's just um, sponsored by the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. It's been five or so long years in the making, um, but it's great because it's an adaptable clinical trial and it's the first of its kind. So again, just crazy. This is These are the type of amazing things that all these donor dollars you know feed into. Yeah. Um, and the reason why the adaptable part is so important is because with clinical trials, you know, there's a a drug going on that they're testing and they're trying now. Everyone gets the standard of care in clinical mm -hmm. trials anyway, so clinical trials are not something to be to be scared of. They wouldn't um, give people these drugs if they weren't tested out first for a while. And um, but if the drug doesn't work, then you're out of the clinical trial and um, and you move on and you try a different one. Well, this is really holistically looking at the patient and continuing to try different things. Um, so if something doesn't work, then working with the doctors and kind of changing that plan and seeing what else we can kind of test out. So we're going along with the journey of the patient in this clinical trial. So it's really special. And I think the exciting part is that we finally launched it. And we now have, um, as of this month, we have three sites that have started enrolling patients. Um, and with this whole COVID thing, you might think, oh, well, is that going to slow down? But I mean, we are still continuing. We still have all of our resources. And um, as it makes sense for patients, we're continuing on with that program it has not stopped so yeah, i know right. that was a lot but it's very exciting so. no i love hearing all of it and the last one what is the what is the last one called point what is it called it's called precision promise and it precision. and it really is it's a clinical trial but a lot of it's focused on molecular profiling as well yeah. um so i know it's hard to remember but um, <laughs> lots of promise so that's the first time i had heard about that and I, so thank okay, you for good. sharing that with me um and i guess i haven't been paying enough attention but uh, how would somebody get involved with that? Like if someone who's yeah. watching uh, wants to get involved in the clinical trial, what would they do? 
Yeah, for both of those programs, for Know Your Tumor and for Precision Promise, um, the first step is always calling our patient services department, and it's called Patient Central. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a free service. It's um, one of the most important parts of PanCan, and it's for caregivers that want to call. It's a neighbor or a friend and certainly a patient that can call in um, and ask about that. I heard a little bit about Precision Promise or Know Your Tumor, and I know someone going through it and, and get started that way. Um, there's just a lot of questions and making sure that it's the right match, and we want to make sure to educate everybody who is interested so that they feel comfortable jumping into those programs. Um, and there's we have a clinical trial search as well. So just on our website, pancan.org, there is a clinical trial search that you can do um, at home. I know we're looking for more at-home resources, so just starting that, that journey and looking into clinical trials in general. We have like the biggest database of clinical trials for pancreatic cancer, and we also have an arm of, of that website if you are a healthcare professional. So it's a little bit of a different search in different language. And so we made sure to have um, both of those available. And that, that has been about two years that we were able to actually put that on our website and have it be completely up to, um, or you know give the opportunity for people to kind of start looking there. But um, just calling or emailing and talking to one of our patient central associates is really gonna start you on that journey to, um, to give you all that information. That's awesome. And can you give us the website one more time? Just Yeah. You. So the website is pancan.org. And if you want to email our patient central um, directly, it's just patientcentral at pancan.org is the email address. Um, and to call, I'll give you the number again, but it's, it's easy to remember. It's 877-2-PANCAN. It's, it's <laughs> Perfect. You guys got all the good stuff. Okay, so if anybody is just joining us, I am talking live with Addie, who is a senior community relationship manager at the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, or PANCAN for short. And we're going to um, open it up. We're going to take your guys' questions at the end, but if anybody has questions, if there aren't any, we won't do any, but if there are some, drop them in. You guys can ask questions. There's a little icon at the bottom. So if you have any questions, we'll get to those at the end. Um, but now I want to jump into you know, the time that we're living in right now, which is about COVID-19, right? And we don't know when it's gonna end. So um, this has been a huge issue for a lot of people, not only those that have pancreatic cancer, there's a lot of other members of the at-risk community who have autoimmune diseases or they've just come out of surgery or anything like that. So, you know, the, the advice that you're gonna give us, Addie, I'm sure is it's, it's tailored towards pancreatic cancer patients mostly, but it can apply to okay. other patients that are at risk. So um, can you, you know, what advice do you have to give to cancer patients um, and, you know, maybe survivors or other at-risk people right now? So um, we had a, a great webinar series that we're starting. We're doing another one on May 8th, but there's a recording of it and it's navigating pancreatic cancer um, during COVID-19. And so I picked up a lot of tips from that. I'm not a healthcare professional. I work really right. closely more with our grassroots community outreach program, but I did you know, pick up a few things and you can kind of go back and watch that on our website. Um, all of our educational webinars, and they're free to join, um, are just on, on pancan.org. And then there's a tab that says Facing Pancreatic Cancer, and then there's Educational Webinars is how you'll find them. Perfect. Um, so um, I wrote down a couple notes um, that I picked up from, from this webinar in general, and we have so many resources that I'll talk about um, later. Um, okay. But I think recovering from surgery, it, is, is a big piece. So if you are a patient that is recovering from surgery, um, it is more likely that you're going to be more um, at risk. Um, obviously, your immune system is a little more sensitive. So um, if that's the case, I mean, just really, it's about communication and over communicating and asking questions to your healthcare mm -hmm. team, um, making sure that your caregivers are the people that you're living with um, are really aware of, of what to do and to make sure that you're in a safe environment and things are clean and that you're you're just staying away from people. Um, I know that's really hard, but I think luckily with technology right now, it's it's important to connect and not be shy about trying new things and, and FaceTime and, and being able to see someone face-to-face -face like we're doing now is a, is a nice experience compared to maybe just on the phone. But phone calls work too. Yeah. Um, so, so I think really if you are recovering from surgery, that is, that's, a little more sensitive um, and and certainly staying away from people that may be traveling a lot or that are going out to the grocery store a lot um, I think you know this kind of mo goes more towards caregivers but we have a whole um, like a news article about that we published with tips for caregivers and things for them to consider um, it's it's a different you know it's a little bit of a different experience when you are 
um, having that heavy burden on your shoulders and really wanting to be safe and you need to kind of take care of yourself first. Um, so, and I think also if you, a lot of pancreatic cancer patients um, have diabetes and if you have diabetes, you are um, a little bit more susceptible um, and at risk um, for COVID as well. So just making sure that you keep that under control and really pay attention to that as people do anyway, but it's just a point to make that in our pancreatic cancer community, that's um, something as well. Um, I also wrote down, they had talked about checkups and treatments. People ask that, do I delay surgery? Do I delay my checkups and my treatments? And honestly, it's, it's again, just that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your healthcare professional. And, and the journey. So I'd say don't assume. Please reach out. Make sure that someone calls you back. Um, ask if, if you don't have cancer right now, you are a survivor and um, at the moment you um, are cancer free, but you have your three month checkups or whatnot. It might, they might recommend that you could wait. You could wait another three months. Um, but it really depends on where you are in the journey. I mean, um, the healthcare professionals are, are there to help you and they care. Um, and they will make sure that, that they're doing the right thing and not prolonging things if it's, um, if it's really important that you go. Um, and I know everyone's taking precautions and all that good stuff. Um, and I think the last thing this goes for caregivers and <laughs> goes for pancreatic cancer patients too, but at this time, my recommendation is, is self-care. Um, certainly not panicking. Mm -hmm. It was a huge piece of that webinar was, we're gonna get through this and it's okay and, and take a deep breath. And there's always risks involved in things, but um, if you can just make the extra effort and your caregivers can to, um, to just isolate yourself and, and be safe and healthy. And then while you're in that space, while you're by yourself, be doing, um, just be eating healthy, get some exercise and get the blood flowing and um, try to stay um, happy and engaged in something, some type of hobby that you have, maybe some breathing exercises or meditation, um, or some type of yoga and just, you know, stretching. And it's just important not to forget um, to just love on yourself a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Those are such great tips. And I think those are great tips, even if you are just in this situation and you have no health issues, you know, like yeah, always yeah. recommending meditation and, you know, self-care for people. And uh, it just helps put you in a better mindset. So it's sort of like everything we're already supposed to be doing, but just yes. like for vigilant yeah. about it when you have at risk. Awesome. Um, so uh, are there any, like, I know you kind of just talked about this, but are there any special precautions that cancer patients or caregivers should take other than just like being super careful about going places and bringing back things or, you know, washing their hands and stuff? Yeah, no, I think you, I think you said it. It's, it's not much different than, than things that we should be doing already. And I think, again, it's just if you've recently had um, surgery or if you're undergoing a really intense chemo treatment, um, just be extra careful with, with trying to stay isolated. And again, be, um, you know, understanding who you're surrounding yourself with. So, um, you know, we forget this when we're a caregiver and we're running around or a survivor. Sorry, it's really loud outside. It's okay. It's okay. Always something in Manhattan Beach. Okay, so, yeah. um, you know, now is the time, I think, more than ever to to rely on our neighbors in a different way. We can't really see them in person, but there's so many great services right now, like delivery services and um, asking a neighbor, maybe someone that you, is close with um, your survivor to just maybe give them a call. Or can your neighbor, if they're going out to get groceries, um, would they mind just picking up a couple things for you so that you're not exposing yourself as a caregiver or a survivor um, out there if that's convenient. So just don't forget to um, to ask about that. But I think as far as risk goes, it's just, again, step one, don't assume and, and just talk to your healthcare professional. See what they, what advice they have for you in your specific situation. And of course, um, also you can contact Patient Central and ask those questions. And we also have really great resources on questions to ask your healthcare professional. And I think that's an amazing resource um, to have when this is new to people and you wanna ask the right questions, but that's what, they, that's what we are here for too, is um, that free education and, and having that one-on-one -on -one support with one of our Patient Central Associates. And when you call um, or you're emailing with someone, you're gonna be emailing with the same person. You really develop that relationship and you have one person um, the whole time you don't have to re-explain things and they'll be with you um, on your journey. So you have lots of support in this community. 
That's so nice. And I have to say, just from my own personal experience, I've been to the PanCan headquarters a few times. Um, and every time I've gone there, everybody I met is super nice. They're so dedicated. Like you guys are all like superstars, amazing rock stars at what you do. And you just care so much. And I can tell, like I've, I've done the tour of the facility and I've seen the patient central kind of phone calls. I mean, it's, it's very private. You don't hear any of the phone calls, Yeah. but uh, just meeting some of the people who run the phones, you can just tell like they are amazing. And I just highly recommend anybody who needs to call in, even if you're not sure if you should call in, just call in. What's, what's the problem? Yeah, no big deal. I'm so glad you said that. Even if you're not sure, just call in because these phone calls are they're completely private and they're also, um, it's just how you want them to be. There's not like a list of things that the Patient Central Associates ask you or grill you about. It's just how are you doing and what would you like to know today and, and how, you know, how can I help you? Um, so it's, it's just really um, based on your particular needs. So that's, that's so great. <laughs> um, so it sort of dovetails into the next question, which is, you know, if you have some resources and recommendations for the at-risk and cancer community that you can share with us. Uh, I would say, you know, we're constantly updating um, our website with new things as it relates to COVID-19 and pancreatic cancer patients and caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, we have quite a lot of resources. I was just um, on a meeting about an hour ago from one of our patient sensor associate um, leadership. Um, members and they were saying they're collecting um, things constantly and always the right trustworthy, um, you know, CDC, et cetera, um, all of those. And also our specialists and our surgeons that are in that pancreatic cancer world so that we can give the right information to this particular community. Um, they were also talking about how um, we actually have been drilling down if you call Patient Central and you live in a certain area, we've been trying to collect many, many resources locally. So there are new things that have been opened up because of COVID and we're trying to keep track of that. So if you call in and you're just wondering, well, what local resources, what should I look for? That's something that a patient central associate could talk to you about. So maybe it's, um, maybe there are a couple hotlines that are new and available and they can tell you locally about maybe keep it updated with what are the social distancing rules or maybe there are some um, like food kitchens that opened up and your neighbor can go pick up something for you for cancer patients or something so um, that's that's certainly a resource as we have local resources and we continue to grow them every day um, also we certainly have lots of information and tips on, on symptoms and, and really what you should do and like you said it's just what everybody should be doing staying away from people telling your healthcare professional if you're going to be going in for surgery or a treatment but you're starting to feel symptoms please call first so that they can be prepared and give you the right advice. Um, precautions and tips for prevention, which are we kind of already mentioned, just again, just social distancing at this time, um, but putting your energy into healthy things. Um, and then also the, the questions to ask your healthcare team, we always have that available, but we have an updated version to add on to the questions related to COVID that you would need to have. Um, and I mentioned those webinars. So the next one is on May 8th. I believe, and again, it's just pancan.org, Facing Pancreatic Cancer, and then our, our free educational webinars that you can register for, but they're always recorded. So if you miss it, um, I think that series, Navigating Pancreatic Cancer um, Through COVID-19 is, is a really great um, resource. And, and it's usually like a panel discussion. So it'll have um, our different specialists and surgeons um, from across the country giving really great advice, timely um, advice. We wanna make sure um, we're constantly updating this community. Um, and we talked about Patient Central. Again, that's that's going to be, I think, everyone's best resource and that one-on-one -on -one support so you can feel comfortable asking any questions um, that you have. Um, I think that's it for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's such a, you're such a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure that everybody who watches this is going to just feel so much more at ease having this information in their back pocket. Um, so thank you for sharing all of that with us. So just like one last question for you, um, you know, how can we make a difference if we're interested in helping out this cause? Well, I think, I think number one during this time, it's, it's important to remember for yourself, even if you don't even know anyone with pancreatic cancer, to, to remember to stay at home, to remember um, to be safe and do social distancing, because that really is helping the cancer patients stay safer, the caregivers stay safer that you see at the grocery store that are shopping for a patient, um, our surgeons and our nurses and our healthcare professionals um, who are everyone who's who's out there that doesn't really have a choice right now. Um, if, if you can do your part, that's, that's I think, number one. 
Um, and I think also, and I know you didn't tell me to say this, but um, I think supporting businesses like yours or Vibe oh. Jewelry, um, because, um, you know, we certainly all of that money, all the things that I talked about wouldn't be possible without donations um, and supporting businesses like yours that continue to support other causes as well. Like you said, you have an audience that hopefully some of these tips will help as well. And, and all the causes that you support um, are really important. So um, I think that's a really great way and a fun way to um, kind of treat yourself, but also help others um, by supporting, um, you know, your line and you have a pancreatic cancer line which is just beautiful inspired by the cell images of pancreatic cancer and um i just i love all of it a couple of them are purple which is our color yeah. um so so definitely people should check that out um thank you for the plug <laughs> yeah I know, I know. but i had to um and then also if you hear of someone that has pancreatic cancer just try to remember to that we have you know our patient services and patient central associates which it's all free information um, it's all timely educational information. That's what we're here for is to help people through their pancreatic cancer journey. So um, if you forget about it, you can always, um, you know, just pancan.org. Hopefully it's easy enough to remember, but, um, you know, just spreading the word about that we're there for people is, is huge help. Um, and we're actually doing our, new, our fundraising events that I normally work on are virtual now. So we have, yeah. they're called Purple Stride. And so there are 5K walks and runs to raise money for pancreatic cancer. Um, we have about 19 of them coming up across the country in the springtime that are, that are turned virtual. Uh, we just had ours in Miami um, a couple weeks ago. And so it's just a fun new way to kind of um, get creative and, and see how we can be supporting this community virtually. So um, if you're local, we have our Los Angeles Purple Stride on May 2nd. Um, so you can look it up through purplestride.org and that's gonna be where all of our Purple Stride events live. Um, and just, you know, even just sharing, wearing purple on May 2nd at any time of the day, snapping a picture, taking a walk and saying um, that you support pancreatic cancer, doing a hashtag purple stride is the hashtag to use where we can see all the wonderful purple that's going on that day. Um, so just even supporting that. And of course there's, there's lots of um, fundraising events that you can do or Facebook fundraisers and, and every dollar and donation um, counts, but I think really right now to just kind of show that support um, online virtually is mm -hmm. is huge because um, you never know. You never know by just doing that, taking a couple minutes out of your day to just support, not anything to do with money, um, who that's going to inspire. And maybe there's someone in your life that you didn't know um, was affected by the disease and you can give them, you know, the information to help them. So those are my yeah, tips. Yes, it's so true because, you know, just sharing on social media, you know, just posting on your story and tagging or hashtagging purple stride when you're wearing purple and, you know, you just spread awareness and you don't know who might follow you that sees that and is like, oh, wow, what's that? And then they learn more about it. So it can just start kind of spreading through everybody like, you know, very well. So that's great. But I have one more question about the, um, the virtual purple stride. Yeah. Um, what is that like? Do you go, and, <laughs> do you go on your phone and, and walk or like, what does that look like? Yeah, no, that's a great question. We have kind of different things going on. Normally in person, we'd have an opening ceremony. And so a lot of these different events are actually kind of pre-recording or, or recording live some survivors that are talking about their their story, um, some people that are talking and educating people a little bit more about Pan Can or talking about some fun local things that are going on. Some people have, have been recording a national anthem and kind of doing it virtually. So really connecting, I think, on Facebook and kind of seeing what's going on. And um, you can find all of our kind of local groups are on Facebook under, the, under group sections. So if you just look up Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, and then it's an extension like Pittsburgh and Miami, um, and you can join those groups. It's it's open for everyone to join. Um, and then on there, that's kind of where all the activity has been um, going on. People have done really creative things. In Miami, there was um, a one of my volunteers dressed up as a mermaid, and she had a perp everything decked out in purple. She was by her pool and got a um, her family to get involved and, and hold up signs and you know, did a Facebook fundraiser um, and just kind of showing that activity virtually was really cool. And, and certainly, um, you know, we, we made phone calls and connected with people on the day that was really um, important. And uh, we had one woman who um, did a 30 minute walk, kind of similar to what she would do with, with her dog, dressed her up with her daughter in a wig. And that kind of looks silly when you're out in public maybe walking, you know, across the street, your neighbors are seeing you. So 
one of her neighbors actually said, what, what are you doing? <laughs> you guys look yeah. really weird. And she told her that she was striving for her late husband who passed from pancreatic cancer and she raises a bunch of money and her, her neighbor had no idea that she was involved in that and said, I, I can't believe that because my dad just got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So she was able to, on her walk, while she was striding, educate someone about the disease. So it's just kind of really cool to see all the stories and creative ways that people are just kind of lighting the town purple um, on Instagram and on, on Facebook, um, on Twitter, et cetera, on those days that we're doing the virtual purple stride. That is so awesome. I totally got goosebumps <laughs> when you told me about the neighbor. That's Yeah, crazy. isn't that amazing? It's so we'll everybody... have to think of something creative to do, you and I. Um, on May yeah. <laughs> yes. I would love to because I was going to participate in the event you know I was going to go do it but yeah. uh, we can't but yeah. um I I was trying to think of ways to you know get involved so I'm really mm -hmm. glad that you told us all about that and and I would love to participate however I can okay. um I love hearing the survivor stories those are always my favorite like anytime yeah. we do the events I love hearing from people it's so mm -hmm. inspirational and obviously, you know, the founders, when they talk, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> this is amazing. It makes you feel so good being involved in a cause. And just talking with you today is like renews that sense of purpose and passion and makes me remember why it is I do what I do. So thank you so much for sharing all of this with me and my community and, and just helping us to kind of get through this time together and like stay positive while we do it. So thank you. Nikki. Awesome. We're so honored and happy that you are a part of, part of our cause. And obviously this community of these amazing folks who, who support you and it's that ripple effect, you know, just continue to do nice things to support each other. So um, really, really honored and excited that you gave me the chance to educate people a little bit. And I, I hope that people feel inspired and stay positive and happy. And we're here for, for this community. And um, so hopefully I'll, I'll be your neighbor really soon. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I hope everyone stays well. And um, again, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And I will repost this video so you can share it and, and you okay. can spread it around. And I'll share it on my story so other people can share it as well. So thank you so much. And I will talk with you soon. All right, thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.